Hello everyone, welcome to part 5 where we will prep and install the build plate. Okay, so here it is. Uh, there have been questions about this build plate. There's a lot of concerns about the quality of this plate. Um, first starting off, it has a really nice finish. Um, it doesn't have that milled look. It looks like it was ground and uh, it's possibly a little bit larger. It's 355 millimeters by 355. On the top here, we can see the four countersunk holes to fix the plate. Notice they're not drilled out to the edge. Um, they're uh, in just a little bit more, I'm going to assume, because I think this plate is a little bit larger, they can get away with doing that, which I think is good. It's a little bit different, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, on the back side, uh, of course, we can still see the four holes, but it's got this, again, really nice ground finish. There are no mill marks because this is ground, which should imply a really nice flat finish. I'm sitting this, instead of my standard workbench, on a, a table I've got, which is half-inch glass. And I'm specifically looking here to see, you know, if I can see any rocking, any movement. Is there any part of this that isn't flat? and it seems rock solid and it's actually kind of hard to lift up off the glass almost as if there's a little bit of a vacuum being created um, if i flip this over to try the other side it's the same thing there's really no rocking at all actually not really there's it's just flat out no rocking um, this feels like it's flat i don't have the equipment to check for flatness so this is about the best i can do um, and again, there's just no movement whatsoever. The edges are really nicely beveled and taken care of. And the corners themselves are rounded as well, which again is a really nice touch. And this is done on both sides. And again, it looks really good, like quality. I'm going to measure the thickness here. And it is a solid eight millimeters thick, which I think is within spec as well. Just to try again to see if I can find any curvature, I'm using my squares. They're small, unfortunately, they're all I've got. Um, but they don't rock or move either. Um, as you can see here, I'm trying it on various spots, each of the corners um, in different directions, in the center, every which way I can, and it just seems flat. Um, I'm sure with the proper equipment, uh, you know, you'd be able to detect some curvature unevenness, but right now, from my perspective, it's just looks really good and it looks like a great surface to print on. Taking a little step further here, see if I can shine a light behind it, to see if I can see any light come through, and it doesn't. It's flat. So from my perspective, this seems like a really nicely built plate. Uh, at this point, I've got no complaints. We'll see how the build goes. It's time for some simple build plate math to help us determine where we're going to place the different pieces that need to be attached. The build plate is 355 by 355 millimeters. The heater is 300 by 300 millimeters. And if we place it on the center, all we need to do is subtract the two, divide it by two, and that tells us exactly how far each edge should be from the edge of the plate. To place the heat fuse between the two pre-drilled holes, but off center, we simply take the 150 millimeters between the two holes, divide it by two, and divide it by two again, which gives us 37 and a half millimeters to the left of the center line. We want to secure the heat fuse to the plate 
with a three millimeter hex bolt. And to do that, we're gonna have to drill and thread a hole into the eight millimeter plate. The fuse is 4.85 millimeters thick or just about five millimeters. If we create a five millimeter hole uh, for the bolt to attach to, and the heat fuse itself is five millimeters thick, that implies we need a three millimeter by 10 millimeter hex bolt. In addition, when we drill that hole, we have to account for the tip of the drill bit, which is at least one millimeter tall, but you should measure yours. It's more likely gonna be one and a half or two millimeters. And so we're gonna have to add that to the total distance, the five millimeters that we're gonna be drilling into the plate. In addition, a three millimeter tap requires a two and a half millimeter hole. And so that implies we're going to be drilling a two and a half millimeter hole, six millimeters deep, at least, into the plate that we will then create the threads for. Now we'll lay out the lines that we just calculated using a tape measure and a simple carpenter square. This really um, doesn't have to be absolutely accurate but, you know, hopefully within a millimeter or so. And get the right side here and complete the line. That's at 27 and a half millimeters. And we'll do the same all the way around. Once you've laid out the lines, measure a second time, just to be sure. And uh, make sure we've got that 27, between 27 and 28 around all the edges. Um, as I measure, I've made a mistake, which is why we measure twice. And so one side here I've got off, and so let me remeasure and draw the new line. And then finally, let's draw the center line um, because off that center line, we'll measure where the heat fuse is gonna go so we can drill and tap a hole. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm making a pretty bad mistake all the way through this entire measuring process. I'll reveal that a little later in the video. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the center line. So I'm measuring to the center of the plate. And once I have the center line in place, I'll be able to measure from it as to where the hole is going to be for the heat fuse. And just a reminder, that's 37.5 millimeters from the center line. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the template that we printed as part of the parts for the Voron uh, to use that uh, to determine the depth from the edge of the plate 
again as to where that hole is going to go. So now I'm just going to lay the plate down on a piece of cloth. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the wooden bench here, and I don't want to do anything that might bend the plate. So um, I'm just getting ready to uh, use a center punch to mark the hole, and then from there to actually drill the hole. Now that we have that punched, uh, that'll stop the drill bit from moving around outside of where we actually want that hole to be drilled. Uh, this is great for accuracy. Here I've got the two and a half millimeter drill bit along with the three millimeter taps for the hole. Um, the way these work, you typically start with the first tap, um, which helps you get a starter thread going and helps you keep the tap straight. Um, then you've got the intermediate one, which brings it down a little deeper, the thread. And the final one, especially because this is a blind hole, should take the thread almost all the way down to the bottom. You just go through them by series. And in addition, I don't have a drill press, so I 3D printed this little device here. It um, hopefully will help me keep the drill and drill bit straight so I can drill perpendicular to the plate nicely. Um, I've, you can see here how the drill goes in and the amount of bit that sticks out on the end is the six to six and a half millimeters that we need to properly drill the hole. Drilling this is going to create a lot of friction, which means a lot of heat, which means there's a good chance the PETG will melt and make a mess, which I don't want to have happen. So here I'm lubricating it with a little bit of WD-40 and uh, making sure it gets through there. And then I'm also going to spray a little extra on the bit itself just to uh, make sure this slides. By now, some of you may have noticed the big mistake I just made. <laughs> I drilled and tapped blind hole on the top side of the plate instead of the bottom where the heat fuse is supposed to be. So uh, <laughs> I took the liberty of just drilling the hole straight through after tapping it. And here we are on the back side, and I'm about to re-tap this again. Uh, unfortunately, this hole is going to go all the way through, but it really shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's not what I wanted to do, but it'll be perfectly serviceable. Don't make this mistake. Since I'm going to have to tap straight through, I need to set this up on something. I'm going to use this piece of scrap wood, and that'll allow me to drive the tap all the way through the hole through the other side. And I'm going to go through using the multiple taps. This is the first one, um, which is designed to create the starter, and then I'll follow through with the others. If you've never tapped a hole before, every quarter turn to a half turn, you turn it backwards about another quarter turn 
to break the chip. Um, there is a like a, a string or a extra long chip that starts to grow and form inside, which will clog things as you try to move forward. It's important that you break that chip, and that's what that quarter backward turn is for. Um, you probably can't hear it here in the recording, but I certainly can. When I do that quarter turn, I actually hear a tiny little pop or a snap as that chip breaks. I've decided to skip the second tap and actually just go straight to the third. Um, running through those three different taps is important when you're trying to drill a blind hole, but in this case I'm going straight through, so I'm just going to go ahead to the final tap. To be honest, with the very first tap, if you go deep enough, um, and if you can make sure uh, where the full threads appear on the tap, make it all the way through the other side, you probably don't even need to take this step, but I'm going ahead to do it just to make sure I've got nice clean threads. So here I've cleaned the plate with Windex thoroughly. I've also cleaned the work surface as well thoroughly with Windex, made sure all the chips are gone. And now I'm using some iso alcohol um, for the top and the bottom as well, just making sure every last bit of um, oil or any residue is gone um, because we're preparing to add the uh, magnetic sheet to the top of the plate. Now we've got to drill holes through the magnet sheet, magnetic sheet to make sure our screws will um, <laughs> be easy to fit in the holes and also to make sure they um, are flush mount or at least below the surface. And so I'm just going to go through and in this case I'm drilling a two and a half millimeter hole and the other ones will be just enough to fit the larger screws. And we'll get all four corners. I'm drilling on a piece of wood um, to eliminate as much, um, or to, to allow us to have as clean an edge as possible on the other side, but it won't be clean enough. We'll have to do some additional work to make it smooth on the other side. So on the other side, we got to use a larger bit for the mounting holes where the five millimeter screw heads would go in. We're just widening that hole so those screw heads fit in. Be careful you don't drill down to the aluminum. I'm only drilling the magnet here. Now, to make sure these are flat, I'm also going to countersink these. Um, they have really rough edges that tend to stick up a little bit, and we need our um, metal plate, PEI plate, to sit absolutely flat and flush. So this will 
clean off the edges nicely so to ensure we have a really nice flat surface. And make sure you do all of these holes, including the one for the heat fuse. And you should be able to feel it, and they should feel really nice and flat. If not, you may have to give it a second shot. So here I flipped the plate over again, and we're going to attach the heating pad. To make sure this adheres as well as possible, I'm using some Windex here. I want to make sure every bit of grease, dirt, fingerprints, anything that might cause a problem uh, is cleaned off this plate. Um, we want to make sure this sticks really, really well, especially under the heat, and it'll be hanging from below. So here, we'll install the pad. Uh, we'll do this pretty much the same way we did the magnetic pad. Uh, we need to make sure there are absolutely no bubbles, and again, this sticks as well as it possibly can. We do not want this coming off at some point uh, during a print. And here I'm using the guidelines that I drew in and measured earlier. You may find after all the cleaning, you may have to reapply the lines. Um, it's not absolutely critical, but it'd be nice to get this within a couple millimeters or two. And here I'm using a plastic bag because the surface of this is kind of rough. It does seem to slide against the surface of this, so it seems to work reasonably well, I guess, as a squeegee of sorts. So here I've rough cut some cardboard from a box that I'm going to sit over this. I'm going to put some weight on top and let this sit overnight. According to 3M, this should really dry in place um, for about 72 hours. So I'll get as close as I can before we do anything serious with this. Um, for weight, I'm just going back to the box, the Blue Rolls box, and getting all the Lexan sheets and everything else. They're really nice and heavy. They sit nicely on top and will keep this flat while it cures. So the following day, I take this off and pull off all the cardboard. Uh, the glue should have set pretty nicely by now. Again, this should still probably stay for a couple more days to make sure it cures properly. Um, but again, it should be set. So I'm going to install the heat fuse. Here I've got my 3 by 10 millimeter screw. I'm going to use some heat sink compound. I don't know if this, well, I don't think this is absolutely necessary, but I had some lying around and I figured, why not? Um, you know, I don't know the quality of this heat fuse. I want to make sure every bit of heat is getting to this fuse to ensure it blows as it should. Um, probably at some point in the future, probably want to replace this with a named brand, something, you know, that maybe I trust a little more. But I think for now, this is going to work and I'm going to give it a shot. And it actually threads in really quite nice. Um, I'm going to make sure you orient it the right way. I'm setting this down and then tightening the screw. Uh, if you have not used threads <laughs> that were cut with a tap, you're missing out. You will not believe how nicely and easily the screw threads in. I'm going to save the wiring for later, um, especially because now this is sitting on the opposite side of at least what the instructions stated. I don't think it's going to matter, um, but we'll get to wiring in a later episode. So we're going to partially build the Z end stop assembly. Um, the full construction of this is supposedly the very last thing that happens when putting the Voron 2.4 together. And so one of the first things we're going to have to do is take this pulley and pull off one guide. Um, I don't have a vise or anything, so I'm using a napkin here so I don't damage this, and I'm using a vise grip to hold it. And then I'm going to take a pair of channel lock pliers because they've got nice long handles to give me some leverage. Hold on tight and 
yank it off and it pops right off. And as you can see, that's pretty easy and we're done. Um, next, I gotta fit this in. It's a very tight fit. Um, this is gonna be tough. Okay, so I've tried a number of techniques to drive this in here and nothing has worked. So now I'm about to resort to brute force. <laughs> I hate to do this and to be honest, that isn't even doing such a great job. And um, well, again, I'm not proud of what's next. Hopefully you'll see some humor in this. The micro switch from Blue Rolls comes pre-wired, and uh, although the instructions tell you you should be able to solder the socket directly to the micro switch, uh, it doesn't really fit the pins of the micro switch. And again, it is pre-wired, so I'm just going to let this be. And when it comes time to doing the electrical and actual wiring, um, I'm going to see if I can just use this as is, insert it in and wire it directly um, using the wire that's already attached and not using the socket, but we'll see. So here I've installed the T-nuts, I've loosened up the DIN rails and loosened up the Mitsumi rails just slightly. I've also used my square to square these as best I can, um, but of course everything's a little bit loose so I can align this. I'll tighten it up later. Here I'm making sure uh, the T-nuts and everything is aligned and I'm also inserting the spacers. Do this for all four corners and tighten the bolts down. And go ahead and insert the T-nuts for the ZN stop. And we'll attach that now, or at least the body. Again, we won't have the micro switch or the rod in here, but we'll put those in later as per the manual, which should be the last thing we do when we build this printer. Um, I'm going to put it fairly snug, um, place it much closer to the plate so it's not touching the plate, and then I'll tighten these down. And this concludes the construction of the base plate for the Voron 2.4. If you like what you've seen, if you find this useful, please hit subscribe and like. Thank you.